When we made our McDonald's spicy chicken McNuggets, you were praise hands emoji. Then we ran out, and you were streaming tears emoji. Now they're back, so you can be grinning face with sweat emoji. Order ahead on the McDonald's app. And get money mouth face emoji with two orders of crispy, irresistible 10-piece McNuggets. Spicy or classic for just $6. Limited time only. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Single item at regular price. On today's Smart 7, pressure grows on Israel over drone strikes, Taiwan hit by massive earthquake and much more. It's Thursday, 4th of April, it's Burrito Day, and happy birthday, Robert Downey Jr. The Smart 7, it's news, but not the news. The death of seven aid workers in Gaza after multiple drone strikes by Israeli forces continued to cause shockwaves around the world on Wednesday. The founder of the World Central Kitchen charity, Chef Jose Andres, said the IDF had clearly targeted the convoy systematically car by car, even though the convoy had notified the Israeli military of their plans. The three British men who were killed, James Henderson, John Chapman and James Kirby, were providing security for the aid workers through a company called Solace Global, and director Matthew Harding paid tribute to their courage and dedication. They were extremely experienced, very professional uh, and thoroughly excellent operators. James Kirby's cousin Adam Maguire paid tribute to his determination to help those in need. He was selfless, he would help anybody um, and this is one of the reasons he he felt he had to go and work with World Central Kitchen. He he knew he had to go, his friends were telling him that this is probably a bad place to go. He knew he had to go and help people and that was James all over. The aftermath of the Gaza drone attack has seen political pressure on Israel escalate sharply. After condemnation by UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and US President Joe Biden, Israel has promised an independent and transparent investigation into what happened. And with over 200 deaths of aid workers, along with medical personnel and journalists, since the war began, revelations that Israel had been using AI to determine Hamas targets and then using so-called dumb bombs to destroy family homes has caused grave concern. UK Foreign Minister Lord David Cameron was attending the NATO meeting in Brussels and he says the need for an inquiry is urgent. I welcome what the Israeli foreign minister said yesterday about a full, urgent and transparent inquiry into how this dreadful event was allowed to happen and we want to see that happen very, very quickly. With some charities now pulling back from Gaza and the UN urging no movement at night, things appear to be worsening for the Palestinians stuck in the middle. Lib Dem leader Sir Ed Davey echoed a new YouGov poll which showed 59% of voters believe that Israel is violating human rights in Gaza and 56% who think arms sales to Israel should be banned. I really think now is the time to end exports of arms to Israel. It does look like Israel has broken humanitarian law and we really shouldn't be exporting arms to any country that breaks international humanitarian law. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky signed a new law on Wednesday that sees the conscription age in Ukraine lowered to 25. The two-year drop is intended to help boost Ukraine's ranks as it faces into what could be a difficult spring as Russia continues to push its manpower advantage on the battlefield. NATO foreign ministers began a two-day meeting in Brussels on Wednesday, which is a precursor to July's NATO summit which takes place in Washington. In the absence of American funding and weapons, there's a new proposal which would see a 100 billion euro fund created to support Ukraine over the next five years. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg is keen to give long-term support as Russia's war continues. Every day of the in a decision in the United States uh, on providing more support to Ukraine has consequences on the battlefield. That's one of the reasons why the Ukrainians now have to ration uh, ammunition. That was a live show on Taiwan's news channel as the island nation was hit by the strongest earthquake it's seen since 1999. The quake measured at 7.2 on the Richter scale, destroyed buildings and caused power outages and landslides. The impact was also felt in Japan and the Philippines as tsunami warnings were triggered. At least nine people have been killed and over 1,000 injured as rescue teams continue to track down more than 50 who are still missing. Social media was full of images of buildings in the city of Hualien tipping over onto their sides and part of the headland on Turtle Island.
island slid into the sea. Journalist James Chater lives in Taiwan and was at home in his flat when the quake hit. Shaking was pretty strong, but not as bad as the worst affected areas in, in Hualien, which is on the east coast of Taiwan. That's where the, the images kind of coming up on social media right now are a bit more troubling. There's been some pretty big landslides and, and the four deaths have been reported in that part of Taiwan. Still to come on today's Smart 7, Arsenal are back on top and there's a new dark comedy about podcasting on the way right after this. Now on Broadway, an enemy of the people is a New York Times critic's pick. Jeremy Strong is one of the great actors of his generation, hails the Chicago Tribune. In a performance, the Wall Street Journal praises as powerfully affecting and bitterly funny. Michael Imperioli sets off sparks, cheers the Hollywood Reporter. Victoria Pedretti is luminous, rings variety. From director Sam Gold and playwright Amy Herzog, an enemy of the people is urgent, electrifying, and haunting, declares USA Today. An enemy of the people, on Broadway through June 16th only. Welcome back. It's a busy week in the Premier League with three games on Wednesday and two more to come on Thursday. Wednesday saw Brentford take on Brighton, Arsenal welcome Luton and Man City play host to Aston Villa. There was plenty to play for with Liverpool top of the table and not in action until Thursday. Brentford and Brighton finished goalless while Man City beat Aston Villa 4-1 with a Phil Foden hat trick which kept City right in the mix. Arsenal beat Luton 2-0. That was enough to put them back on the top of the table to the delight of manager Mikel Arteta. Yes, very happy. A really difficult game. Uh, credit to Luton. I think they are a really good side. We made uh, a few changes. We fresh the team up. We utilize the squad in the right way. I'm so happy. Much like gin and tonic, John Tarode and Greg Wallace are not particularly great on their own, but when you put them together, something almost magical happens. Their recipe for success has seen MasterChef reach 20 seasons, and they've been on the show since 2005. This year's edition has just kicked off on the BBC, and to celebrate, they are on air three nights a week. You can expect all the usual high pressure and culinary daring, and Greg says it's right to celebrate the show. Well, we're 20 years old, right? So we should have a bit of an event. We should yeah. have a bit of a party, a bit of a celebration. And no better way than to welcome back some of the people that have made the yeah. competition and the show what it is. And of course, have also had brilliant careers in, in the industry. Everyone loves a true crime podcast, but have you ever wondered how they're made? Well, a new Netflix dark comedy called Bodkin takes us behind the scenes as a group of podcasters head to West Cork in Ireland in search of grisly audio to delight their audiences. Not surprisingly, things don't go to plan. The seven-episode series stars Will Forte, along with Irish actress Siobhan Cullen and Robin Cara. Interestingly, this is the first scripted Netflix production made by Higher Ground, the production company founded by Barack and Michelle Obama, and the first episode drops on May 9th. Yeah. Hi there. You the podcasters? Yes. Yes, we are. I'm a journalist. I'm still consulting on a true crime podcast in the Irish end of nowhere. I've always thought that Ireland was the most beautiful country in the world. All I see is shit. Fields and fields of shit. I came to Bodkin expecting a simple cold case. What if the cold case isn't cold? You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes, we'll give you the world.